What really happened to Elizabeth Ashley? Star in Evening Shade. Elizabeth Ashley was born Elizabeth Ann Cole on August 30, 1939, in Ocala, Florida, U.S. Ashley left Louisiana State University after her freshman year and moved to New York. She studied acting at the Neighborhood Playhouse School of the Theater there, supporting herself by working as the Jell-O Pudding Girl on a television program and as a showroom model. Life will never be because you are weak, but give in and treat you easily, will never cease to be difficult when you first enter a certain field, and there will never be a lack of surprise. This life is always for those who know they are weak and make themselves strong. Today our story will be really full of emotions. Of course, it wouldn't be easy when a woman with limbs and limbs carries many great responsibilities, and unfortunate losses and life want to crush her. Award-winning actress Elizabeth Ashley can always be counted on to give her all. Grand in style, exotic in looks, divinely outgoing in personality, and an engaging interpreter of Tennessee Williams' florid Southern Bells on stage. The liberal-minded Elizabeth immediately embarked upon an acting career following her education and relocated to New York. Breakthrough year occurred in 1959 when she made her off-Broadway debut with Dirty Hands, played Esmeralda in the Neighborhood Playhouse production of Camino Real and took on Broadway with Dor Charis The Highest Tree. Now using the marquee name of Elizabeth Ashley, the 1960s proved to be even better, taking her to trophy-winning heights. After understudying the lead roles in Broadway's Roman Candle and Mary, Mary, she won the role of Molly in the delightful comedy Take Her, She's Mine and won both the supporting actress. Tony and Theatre World Awards for it. Neil Simon was quite taken by the new star and created especially for her the role of Corey Bratter in 1963's Barefoot in the Park opposite Robert Redford. She received another Tony nomination, this time for Best Actress. In addition to these theatrical pinnacles, Elizabeth also found happiness in her private life when she met and married actor James Ferentino, who was also on his way up. This happiness, however, was short-lived. The marriage lasted only three years. The attention she earned from Broadway led directly to film offers and she made a highly emotive debut in Harold Robbins' glossy soper The Carpetbaggers, headlining handsome George Peppard. The critics trashed the movie but Elizabeth sailed ahead, temporarily. Following intense roles in the superb all-star film Epic Ship of Fools and the psychological crime drama The Third Day, which again starred Peppard, the still-married Elizabeth divorced her husband and wed Peppard in 1966, taking a hiatus to focus on domestic life. The couple went on to have a son Christian Peppard, who would later become a writer. The Peppard-Ashley marriage was a volatile one, however, and the twosome ultimately divorced in 1972. Wasting no time, Elizabeth returned to the stage and also went out for TV roles. Abandoning a film career that had just gotten out of the starting gate proved detrimental and she never did recapture the momentum she once had. Broadway, however, was a different story. The dusky-toned actress pulled out all the stops as Maggie the Cat in Tennessee Williams' Cat on a Hot Tin Roof co-starring Keir Dullia and as Sabina in Thornton Wilder's The Skin of Our Teeth the following year, and she was back on top. Other heralded work on the live stage would include Caesar and Cleopatra opposite Rex Harrison, Vanities and, notably, Agnes of God, for which she received the Albert Einstein Award for Excellence in the Performing Arts. Following Cat on a Hot Tin Roof for which she won a third Tony nomination, Elizabeth struck up a close friendship with author Williams. Breakthrough Broadway role in Take Her, She's Mine earned her Life magazine cover story, November 1963. Over time, she would play and come to define three of his finest female roles, Mrs. Venable in Suddenly, Last Summer, Alexandra Del Lago in Sweet Bird of Youth, and Amanda Wingfield in The Glass Menagerie. Elizabeth went on to sink her teeth into a number of other famous plays as well, all peppered with her inimitable trademark flourish, Martha in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, 
Isadora Duncan in When She Danced, Maria Callas in Master Class and the Scheming Regina in The Little Foxes, to name a few. On 90s TV, she found daytime soaps to her liking with eye-catching parts on Another World and All My Children. She also appeared in the ensemble cast of Burt Reynolds' series Evening Shade. The occasional serious film supports in Rancho Deluxe and Coma were often intertwined with campier, over-the-top ones such as her psychotic lesbian in Windows. Elizabeth Ashley raped in 1977. Revealed in 1993. Her jaw was shattered in a boating accident. It had to be replaced. It took five years to recover. While portraying Cleopatra in George Bernard Shaw's Caesar and Cleopatra on Broadway in 1977 opposite Rex Harrison, she had an eye injury. She missed a few performances, then finished the run wearing an eye patch. The tragedy happened again in 1999 a fire destroyed her New York City apartment and lifelong mementos which she had recently shipped to NYC from California. The blaze was caused by a damp but smoldering cigarette which Ashley threw into her trash can before she left the apartment in the morning. In 2005, 31 years after playing Maggie, she was again a success in Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, this time as Big Mama. Overcoming a series of tragic, personal setbacks, a third divorce, a boating accident, a NY apartment fire, and a rape incident, the still lovely Elizabeth continues to demonstrate her mettle and maintain a busy acting schedule on stage Enchanted April, Anne and Debbie, Film Happiness in 1998, Labor Pains in 2000, The Cake Eaters, Ocean's 8 in 2018, and TV Caroline in the City, Law and Order, Treme, Russian Doll. Elsewhere, her memoir actress, Postcards from the Road in 1978 became a bestseller. She was also a founding member of the Board of Directors of the American Film Institute while serving on the First National Council of the Arts during the administrations of Presidents Kennedy and Johnson, and has also served on the President's Committee for the Kennedy Center Lifetime Achievement Awards. That's what is impressive about this young girl. The old days was the story of the old days, and now it is still the same. We used to be weak. The reason we're strong, whether it comes from a loved one or above all comes from someone's own passion, and the strength can only be themselves. I awaken it in the mind of a good man.